Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Wonder Snatch. Happy Pride, happy summer, <laughs> sun's out, which means better slap on the sunscreen. All right, so today is going to be another installment of my Dermatology and Drag series where I'm going to be talking about skin cancer and sunscreen. Oh, and did you see Rockham Sakura just did a reaction video of a video I made of her about a year ago, all right? So today I'm going to do a skin cancer tutorial of a new Rockham Sakura face, okay? She likes to stick things to her face and everything, so you know, that's a bit like, I guess, <laughs> skin cancers or pre-cancers, which I'm going to be talking about. And today's video is also in collaboration with a local skincare company called Yours, okay? Check out the Instagram, at lovefromyours, okay? To talk all about sunscreen for pride, okay? And if that's something you want to see, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications. All right, so if you want to learn more about skin cancers, keep watching. All right, I'm back. So today I'm going to be talking about skin cancers and I'll be doing this new Rockham Sakura look, okay? She changed up her makeup recently. I think she's trying to get away from like the kimchi, Trixie Mattel kind of look. And she's got all these squiggles in there and she's like painted hearts and she's really, really elaborate makeup. She even had this video about Decora, which is basically the anime makeup style where you just basically stick a whole bunch of stuff to your face. So I'm going to try to go for that today to talk about this topic of skin cancers and sunscreen, all right? Don't forget to wear sunscreen. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to prime my face and draw the heart on. It's really nice of Rockham to shout us out. <laughs> she shouted out two other queens as well. Um, Julianne Ho and this other really amazing makeup artist called Elena Glam. So really follow them as well. I think they all, they all deserve a follow. I mean, and if you're here from Rockham's video, <laughs> really thank you for joining us. I hope I'm able to entertain you as much as she does. Okay, yeah, I think I jumped about... 200 subscribers since she dropped that video. Now that I've primed my face, I'm going to go and draw that heart. Oh, I think I better put on my face tapes so it doesn't get distorted. Yeah, the reason I use face tapes is because my eyes are really, really hooded. I have quite a heavy brow bone, so I want to pull this skin back so it gives me more real estate to work with around my eyes. So skin cancer is actually a pretty common form of cancer. Okay, it's probably one of the most common causes of cancer, okay, um, worldwide. It's actually split into two types of cancer. You've got melanoma, the really scary one, and then you've got your non-melanoma skin cancer. And this is so common that they don't even include this in stats usually, okay? So it's actually quite common. Okay, a lot of your celebrities have had it, okay? Stuff like what we call the basal cell carcinoma. Hugh Jackman had two, okay? And I think Ewan McGregor also had one. I'm not sure what he had, can't really find it, but so people with very light skin are predisposed to skin cancer. So the most common cause of skin cancer is sun exposure, okay? Sun exposure, UV, okay, damages your cells and predisposes to skin cancer. Another very common cause of skin cancer is HPV, okay? You know, that's the virus that causes warts. Sometimes when run rampant or spe special strains of this virus can also cause cancer as well, okay? And other cancers might be caused things like chronic inflammation or when your immune system is compromised. For example, if you're receiving drugs for renal transplant, you're more likely to get skin cancers. But the most common cause is the sun. <laughs> Cover this rough heart-shaped area with white. Okay, and then Rock uses lipstick to color this in, okay? And her color scheme in this picture that I'm referencing is kind of like a red to yellow thing. But today with my wig and everything, I want to go for a more pastel, orange, pinky, peach kind of colors, okay? And I think these are the colors I actually used in my original video as well. So this will be an updated Wonder Snatch Rock'em look. <laughs> I'm going to use my kimchi high key cloths in tangerine, okay, to get this orange appearance. There are probably genetic causes of skin cancer as well, okay? So some people who are really light-skinned or red hair also might be predisposed to skin cancer, okay? Or people who have a strong family history of skin cancer. So we get a lot of people with family histories of skin cancer who actually come for skin checks all the time, okay? So it is a myth okay that darker skinned people don't need sunscreen okay so although darker skinned people there's slightly low incidence of skin cancers the skin cancers that darker skinned people can get can be really different and strange sometimes they're even underneath the nails and the sun also causes aging and pigmentation so darker skinned people should definitely still use sunscreen okay let's blend that out uh, the white base gives us a very nice pastel gradient okay i'm going to use the athena palette to get some of these peaches in Mixing some of the peach here, pink for the blush. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, the most common types of skin cancer 
are what we call your non-melanoma skin cancers, okay? Not the melanoma ones. And the good thing about these cancers is that they usually don't kill you, okay? So probably that's why they're not included in a lot of the stats. So these are, for example, your basal cell carcinomas, okay? And your squamous cell carcinomas. Okay, the basal cell carcinomas are the ones that arise from the stem cells at the bottom layer of your skin right there, okay? And sometimes in the hair follicle as well. And the squamous cell ones are the ones that arise from the cells right above those, okay? So these cells are a little bit more differentiated, okay? So a bit more mature. And these cancers can be a little bit more aggressive as well, okay? The basal cell ones sometimes just stay where they are, okay? They don't like crawl into the rest of your skin or spread to the rest of your body. And this is what Hugh Jackman had. Okay, so very pastel, orange to pink to yellow. I think um, rock sets all this, but I think I'm going to try doing, doing some of these colours on a wet base first. Okay, so today I'm going to use my Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette, and I'm going to go in with a whole bunch of these colours. I'm going to go in the orange first, and she maps out a really rounded crease right up there. So orange. Hmm, this is darkening quite a bit. Okay, and that into the pink. I'm gonna use a yellow in the Vivian palette to give me that tail. Okay, so she's got a, she's got this new way where she. You have your other form of skin cancer, which is a little bit less common. Okay, according to data, it's actually the nineteenth most common cause of cancer, and that's melanoma. And this is a cancer of your pigment cells or the melanocytes, different from your skin cells, and this can be very aggressive. Okay, let's go back with those colors again to intensify everything. I'm gonna try the orange here. Okay, people with more moles, okay, many, many moles, or what we call dysplastic nevi, moles that look a bit funny, or a family history of melanoma, are more predisposed to get melanoma. So these people should get regular skin checks, maybe every year. Okay, and the incidence of melanoma is actually increasing, okay, over the years. And this is probably because how tans have become so fashionable. Right? After Coco Chanel showed off a beautiful tan, everyone wanted to get a tan, okay? And people started inventing things like tanning beds. People started going on more beachside vacations and not using sunscreen or using very poor sunscreen, okay? And this is actually what has caused an epidemic of melanoma, okay? Especially in countries like Australia. So even Khloe Kardashian had a melanoma in her back which she removed at 26 years old. So, you know, be really careful out there, okay? Melanoma, if it's caught early, it can be treated, but a lot of the time, it ends up killing you. I mentioned Bob Marley earlier. Bob Marley actually had a melanoma growing under one of his toenails, okay? And it's really hard to detect those kinds. Okay, I'm gonna bring this orange down to contour the nose. Gradiate all of this orange up there. Going in to level up. The issue is that right now I'm doing all this over a orange base. So hopefully, it doesn't get too muddy. How does skin cancer actually form? The UV light actually damages the DNA of all the skin cells that live at the basal layer of your skin. And these DNA damage are caused by things like your UVA and the UVB lights, okay? They cause different kinds of mutations and damage. Your body actually manage manages to, to clear these kind of damages quite Quite easily, actually. Your cells actually have a mechanism where they actually do sound like proofreading. So every time there's a mutation, it either gets corrected or the cell gets erased, okay? Gets kicked out, okay? So actually, most of these mutations don't amount to anything at all. And even your immune system is very good at coming along and getting rid of these cells, okay? So most of the time, these mutations don't do anything, okay? But over time, okay? Over time and a lot of sun damage, a lot of cigarette smoke, a lot of pollution, a lot of other kinds of damage, inflammation and all the all this stuff, mutations tend to accumulate and at some point, okay, it tips over and it turns into a cancer, okay? And these cells don't respond to any signals or anything and just proliferate willy-nilly, okay? And sometimes they proliferate so much that they invade into your bloodstream and spread to other sites and that's what cancer actually is. So I'm going to blend the yellow into the orange. So it might be a big pastel mess. Okay, but remember, try to keep this area lighter. Right, Rock also says to keep the center of the face highlighted. And as you can see here, I've got sweaty bits, <laughs> which I think I will cover with clouds later. I'm going to blend out this orange here with pink contour. 
So, a lot of things have to go wrong before a cancer develops, okay? And that's why cancers are not so common, okay? With our mutations happening all the time, okay? They're just being cleared. And that's why you want to protect yourself as much as you can with easy things like sunscreen. All right, so I've started to go in and cutting the crease with some clown white light, okay? She's got this new way that she does this squiggly thing at the end here. So I'm trying to get that right. All right, so what do skin cancers look like, okay? It can be really, really tricky, okay? Okay, skin cancers sometimes just look like little red bumps, okay? Or sometimes they can might ulcerate, okay, where their skin might break or they might bleed, okay? But a lot of times in the early stages, they might start off looking like a pimple or something like that. So it's a really, really good idea to get a dermatologist to check these out if you ever think that you might have something new, okay, that you want to get checked out. And not only that, there are a lot of things called precancers as well, okay? These things called actinic keratosis that just look like scaly patches, okay? Or a Bowen's disease, okay? It just might look like a pink patch like that, okay? And these are actually precancers and might turn into cancer if you don't look after them. Sometimes it just regress and nothing happens, but these need monitoring as well. Okay, now I'm just covering most of my lid with this white. Okay, and I'm going to set all that with white and I'm going to be using the white from the Vivian palette. This is actually pretty good white. Okay, she uses, I have sugar pill taco as well, but I think this new Vivian palette is really quite good. Okay, and when we examine for skin cancers, we always look for what we call the ugly duckling sign, okay? The mole or the lump that looks different from everything else on your body, okay? It takes a lot of practice, but sometimes these are the ones that we tend to biopsy, okay? Especially if a patient has multiple, multiple moles. So, got that all cut out. Now, I think we go in with what? The clouds, I think. Our next step is going to be carving out all the clouds that are going to go on our face. I'm going to use that same lip brush from before. And I'm going to just do um, cloud, cloud. Like a cut crease motion. Clouds are good because they block the sun from giving you cancer. So, we're using my rounded brush. Find these clouds. We can also monitor with zero photography, okay? So if you want to take your own pictures of your own moles and keep them in a folder in your computer, that's a good idea as well. But make sure the lighting and everything is the same. And sometimes we'll have a little bit of a ruler there also, so, so you know the size of it. And we monitor what we call the A, B, C, D, E of skin cancers. Okay, and these basically help us to decide whether something is starting to look a little bit funny. A is for asymmetry, okay? I know asymmetry is a thing about drag queen's eyebrows, but not when it comes to moles, okay? So when a mole starts looking a little bit different, if you draw lines through it and it doesn't look like a mirror image perfectly, you should get it checked out, okay? B is for borders, okay? If the borders start looking irregular, okay? Not a nice round circle, but it starts to like, start leaking out into the skin. That's worrying. C is for colour, okay? If the colour starts turning from brown to black or to red or gets multiple colours within one mole, that's worrying as well. D is for diameter, and diameter, if it's larger than a pencil eraser or five millimeters, get it checked out, okay? Or if it's growing very fast. And E is for evolution or enlarging, okay? Something that is changing, okay? So if it suddenly grows a bump in it or it starts to bleed or it starts to act funny, okay? Just get it checked out, okay? It's not very hard to get checked out. We usually use a dermoscope, okay? To have a really good look at the mole. And these days, we can use very fancy equipments that like, for example, the confocal machine where you can actually look underneath the skin, okay, to look for skin cancers. But most of the time, you require a biopsy, which means you take a piece of skin out to look under the microscope. So basically, just adding some colours to the clouds. Adding some yellows, okay, to the base of the clouds. And just give them a little bit more dimension. Rockham is a really, really good teacher. <laughs> she really explains things so well. I really think that it's after doing her makeup that time that my skills improved really dramatically just from following that tutorial alone, okay? She really taught teachers and helps you, you know, with the steps and tells you, explains exactly why you're doing certain steps, which I think is so helpful. Okay, and the order of everything makes everything so much easier. I'm just going to clean this up a bit and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went and cleaned that up a little bit and put some pink on my eyelids. Now I'm just going to go in with my liner. Okay, this Rockham liner is really winged out. Okay, she starts off by a little bit further out from her normal eye. Across. 
it's got this new squiggle here as well. Which I will try to emulate. Okay, so the treatment for cancers is usually surgery, okay? For your BCCs and your SCCs, a lot of them can be treated with just cutting them out, okay? Sometimes, um, if it's on the face, you need a special treatment called this, what we call MOVES, mi micrographic surgery, where they cut out a little bit at a time and keep checking under the microscope just to make sure that they get all of it out with a minimal amount of tissue damage. Okay, for people who can't undergo surgery, we can do things like curatage, um, topical medication, sometimes medication can help, okay, in really sick patients who can't, uh, who can't tolerate surgery, we have those options too, but usually surgery is the best for your non-melanoma skin cancers. For your melanoma, okay, melanoma is a lot trickier, okay, you gotta do a biopsy to see how far down it goes. Okay, melanomas that are thinner than one millimeter, you can cut them out and just follow up, that's all. Okay, but if it's any deeper than that, and if there's any signs of it being in the lymph node, sometimes you gotta cut the lymph nodes out to check those as well, you might need chemotherapy or radiotherapy. The treatments for melanoma is actually much, much, much improved in the last few years, okay? There's what we call immunotherapy now, okay? And very specialized drugs that actually can boost your immune system, okay? So the immune system can help clear the melanoma much better. And this has actually extended the life expectancy for people with melanoma by a lot, okay, in the last few years. It's really a big breakthrough, okay, melanoma treatment. Even though it's still very, a very dangerous cancer, the treatments these days has markedly improved, okay, the prognosis of getting a melanoma. All right, I'm just gonna repeat this on the other side. I'll be right back. Got my line on both sides on. Now this is gonna go into the under eye. So her under eye is much less big than it was before. Remember last time I went all the way down there. So this time I'm just gonna do it a little bit more controlled. Okay, she still brings it quite far in there. Okay, and set all that with white. Okay, so rather than getting treated for cancer, the best way to approach the skin cancer epidemic is by prevention, okay? And sunscreens really play a huge part in this. Okay, the sunscreens in America are considered a drug, okay? So they're FDA regulated. And that's why you don't have as many options to make sunscreens as in the UK and the rest of the world, okay? So most sunscreens comprise of two things, a physical sunscreen and a chemical sunscreen. Okay, the physical sunscreen is something like zinc oxide, which are basically particles that are so opaque that they reflect light, okay? And we just basically the UV bounces off them. Okay, chemical sunscreens are organic compounds with these benzene rings that absorb UV light and turn it into heat, okay? They both work together, okay? And they and a sunscreen with both of them actually has a lot more sun protection. Okay, you can imagine sun protection being like this Swiss cheese model, okay? A lot of people talk about this Swiss cheese model where everything is not 100%, but everything together, okay? Keeps, makes these barriers that actually blocks the UV from hitting the DNA in your skin cells. Okay, now that white there, I'm just gonna drag on some orange shadow that I used before, the same as a contour. Okay, there's a lot of misinformation and myths about sunscreen, okay? And that's actually my collaboration with uh, yours company. So if you head over to their Instagram, I do a series of stories there where actually I talk about this. I'm gonna link them down below. Although there are all these myths out there, the biggest, biggest, biggest thing is that people are not applying it properly or not applying it at all, okay? Ideally, you should be applying it on the surface layer of the skin only, okay? So you don't like rub it in or anything, okay? Because you want it to sit on top of your skin, okay? So you just put it a light layer and let it sit there and kind of like cure, okay? And that forms a barrier, not when you rub it in. And you have to reapply your sunscreen every two hours, especially if you're swimming or, you know, near a body of water or something. So most people are not using sunscreen correctly, okay? Oh, I forgot to put my the liner on my nose. She says this changes the whole face, and let's see, where's my liner? The white liner. Okay, she dots her nose and draws one. She dots her nose there. Does it change the shape of the nose? Yeah, I guess it does. So let's just leave that for now. I'm just gonna go into the rest of my face account. Foundation. Okay, just cut around that. Okay, but for a little bit of a taster, some of the myths include things like, you know, especially recently, there's been a lot of stuff coming on about sunscreens causing cancer, sunscreens being absorbed into your blood, sunscreens containing contaminants like benzene, okay? It's all very um, fear-mongering, and I'm not sure what the 
end goal is, it's almost like masks being all politicized, right? This whole sunscreen thing seems to be so political. And there must be some something going on behind the scenes where people are just, you know, lobbying for certain sunscreens to be used or banned or something. I don't know, okay? Um, for example, the whole thing about benzene. There was this report that came out that most sunscreens contain benzene in really low quantities, like six parts per million. And they say that there's no safe levels of benzene. But benzene is actually required to make chemical sunscreens, okay? And six parts per million is actually hasn't been shown to be harmful at all in humans. Okay, so I think the jury's really still out in a lot of these things and it shouldn't stop you from using your favorite sunscreens. All right, so I skipped a few steps forward. I've done my face and I'm just cutting the cheek a little bit there. Now I'm going to go in with the lips, okay? So the lips, she's got this new way of doing her lips as well, okay? It's a kind of a, almost like a hint of a lip with a diffuse kind of a appearance, very cartoony. I really, really like her, this new style of hers as well. Okay, so she basically just draws like what she calls the seagull up there, the corners of the mouth, and then this bit here. So she's doing red, but I think I'm going to go for a nudie peach today. Stand the corner of the mouth and bring it in. Okay, so this outlining the lips. Yeah, this is NYX and Tea and Cookies. Um, Trixie's one of Trixie's favorite shades. Okay, and go into the orange right in the middle. There has been some other controversies about sunscreens recently. For example, that there was this independent study which showed that a lot of the SPF numbers, okay, on the sunscreen bottles don't actually match the sunscreen. Okay, and this is because a lot of the sunscreen manufacturers, especially the indie ones, send off their sunscreens to be tested in an independent lab. Standards for testing in these labs are so different that sometimes they can't they can't check and double check all the time. So the, the sunscreen SPF is a lot less than what is declared. And also because people don't apply it correctly, that's even less than. So you have to be really aware of all these things. Remember the Swiss cheese model? Just imagine that every step there's a way that the SPF drops, okay? <laughs> Firstly, from the sunscreen's actual declared SPF to the way that you're applying, to the way that's being washed off, everything. So just imagine that the sun's SPF is just decreasing all the time, okay? So you need to keep reapplying and, and to be aware of <laughs> wearing enough sunscreen. Okay, now she adds like white bits there too. Okay, she draws a heart right there. And then she dots the side. It's almost like a Sagar wood kind of lip also. I did that for my acne dermatology in drag. Really intense blush here. I'm gonna go in with these pinks in the Vivian palette. Okay, so I think I'm almost done. I'm just gonna go and film a TikTok and I'm gonna stick some stuff on my face and I'll be back with the finished look. And I'm back and this is the finished look. Rockham Sakura updated makeup to talk about skin cancer, etc, etc. And I'm wearing these amazing new lashes by a Singapore lash company um, by my friend Aria Dan. She was on my channel before also. It's called See Less or Can See Less on Instagram. So check them out. These are exactly like Rockham Sakura lashes, okay? And perfect for this look. Okay, and don't forget to check out the Yours Instagram page as well for my stories take over there about myths of sunscreen use. And don't forget to use a sunscreen this Pride Month, okay? Keep yourself protected. And if you see something funny looking, get thee to a dermatologist. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye. Decora Princess a la Rock'em Sakura. 
Don't forget to use your sunscreen and check out my other videos. I did a dermatology and drag series for acne and recently I just did a reaction video to the pink dot celebration in Singapore. That's a pride celebration because being gay in Singapore is still legal. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> See you next time. Bye.